What is going on family? Lux here from the MD Journey, helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. This video, I am taking my last board exam of my medical school career. I am so excited. So I'm taking my step two CS exam uh, on Friday, today is Tuesday. So in this video, I'm gonna show you kind of how I study, what the test is about, and then record my reaction. Uh, after the test and so hopefully you guys get a kick out of this one if you do give this video a like and if you so desire give the channel a chance by subscribing but no more time to waste let's get to the intro All right guys, so hopefully you guys are excited to follow me on my step two journey. Um, so this is my step two CS. If you're not familiar, there's two parts of step two. One is called CK, that's your clinical knowledge, and one's called like your clinical sciences. It's basically how this part, when I'm taking CS, is how well you apply your knowledge in front of a patient. So how can you do going into a room, gathering a history, taking a physical exam, and then writing a note, and then putting it all together to come up with a workup for a patient? That is exactly what step two CS is. It is a test where you go for eight hours, maybe nine, and it's like 12 patients, and you see one after another after another, and you just do it for the whole day. It's not a multiple choice exam by any means. You go in, you say hi to the patient, you get their history, take a physical exam really quickly. All this is like within 15 minutes. And then you go ahead and like write a note just the way you would for a normal patient that you see at like a clinic. And you would do a workup or you would kind of write what workup you would do. Um, it's a pass fail exam, so there's no real grade to it. Um, and most students um, do pretty well, or at least pass. And so that is what I'm going for. So I'm gonna show you guys throughout the week kind of how I study. I'm gonna start with uh, today on Tuesday, kind of breaking down what my study plan is. And then Wednesday, Thursday, I'll show you kind of how I review. And, and Friday is test day, so I will show you kind of how the test went. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video, but let me show you on my computer kind of how I am studying for step two. All right, guys, so we are in my computer and I'm gonna show you exactly kind of how I'm studying for my step two CS. So I use a book that many med students use, which is called uh, First Aid for the Step 2 CS exam. Um, I have an online or a PDF version, so just because that's how I prefer reading my text. Um, but this book is nice because it has various amounts of cases, I believe like 44. So let me get to a page that's kind of nice. Um, so this is kind of what I'm doing in regards to studying. There's two styles of cases that have these mini exams, uh, mini cases where they kind of give you like a two to three liner of a vignette on a patient that would potentially come in with each of these complaints, like a headache, a dizziness, and then it will show you all the different diagnoses you should consider. So here's the headache section, and here's the different presentations a patient may come in with, and then the differentials you should probably consider, as well as workup you should probably consider doing it on them as well. So. The first thing that I did uh, when I went through this book and I'm currently doing is going through these cases and covering up the differential and the workup, potentially pretty much by like just zooming in um, and just looking at one end and ignoring this side and trying to see how many other differentials and workups I come up with. Um, and anything that I struggle with, I kind of put on a piece of paper that way I can look um, throughout the week and before test date. So those are the, the mini cases and they have one for almost every single topic. Um, so in addition to that, they have these cases which are more representative of what the actual test will look like, which is, this is probably will be on the door before I go into the patient's room. And um, there'll be a one-liner explaining what they have and then their vitals and anything that I need to uh, do for them. So um, then um, kind of similar to the mini cases, these are their answers to the questions that you may ask them. So basically what I do is I read the case, uh, the, the one-liner and I look at their vitals and then I consider all the questions that I wanna ask them. And then I look at this and I try to see which questions I missed and um, try to see how close I was um, on that. And then I would ask myself, what physical exams would you do? And then look to see what physical exams they were looking for me to do. Uh, and then finally, I would think about what I would tell the patient. So usually you give the, the patient a spiel on what you think they have, as well as what you think that you want them to change. So if they're smoking, you want to tell them about their smoking habits, things of that sort. So I'll practice this before reading this. And then finally, I'll practice what I would put down for um, the physical exam and um, the diagnoses as well as the workup. Um, so that's essentially how I 
um, am structuring my studying. Um, online, I'll link this down below in the video, but they have these nice like templates, which is basically um, the computer software that you would be using so you can practice your timing. So instead of just doing it all in my head, I can, and I will, um, type the, or the history and the physical exam to see if I can do it all under 10 minutes. Um, and it should be doable. So I'll link that down below, but this is kind of a structure of how I'm studying. So hopefully that was helpful for you, any of you guys wondering how in the world you study for step two. Um, and I'll continue to give tips throughout the rest of this video, but this is a jump inside my computer. Now let's jump back out. Good morning guys. All right. So today is Wednesday, yesterday night. I don't know if the clip actually recorded. Um, yesterday night I did about 15 cases. There's about 44 in the book. And then I went to sleep super tired. And so today the plan is to get another uh, 15 done this morning and then another 15 done uh, by the end of the day. So that'll kind of wrap up all the cases. And then tomorrow all I have to do is kind of review and marking down. I'll show you on a piece of paper later. Um, I'm just kind of marking down the cases that I want to come back to because there's something like pretty big that I missed on it. And so, but it's the morning. Um, you guys know I have a morning routine. If you don't, you should check out the morning routine video, which I really like. Uh, that I made and so I'll link it up here or I'll link it down below put in one of these cards um, But you can check it out But one of the things I do is I usually read something on my iPad for about 20-30 minutes So I'm gonna do that before I do my case for the day I've um, also been starting to listen to podcasts in the morning, which is nice when I'm like brushing my teeth and getting my coffee ready um, But I'm gonna do some reading today's book is called the achievement uh, Habit um, haven't started so I'll let you guys know how it is and then we will do our 15 cases um, later this afternoon. I have to go uh, TA, I'm an anatomy TA, so I have to go grade the test that the students took yesterday. And then I have to grade for another class I'm also TA for. So the afternoon's pretty busy, gotta get a workout in. And then, so 15 cases this morning, TA grading stuff, and then 15 cases uh, in the evening. And uh, that's gonna be our day, so uh, relatively bland, but we're gonna make it fun because I'm gonna take you guys with me. So uh, let's get through the reading and then we'll get start the cases. All right guys, so still getting through my cases. I've gotten like four to five done. I have another 10 left this morning. Just wanna give you guys a quick idea of what I'm doing. So I'm going through the cases and then I'm kind of writing down anything that I would likely forget on test day. I've only been studying for like a day and a half really. So uh, it's a lot for the first time around, but just putting on one piece of paper because the idea is tomorrow, I don't wanna do any actual studying. I just wanna look over this and then create like a master sheet of everything that I should kind of just keep in mind uh, going into test day. So that includes, you know, like, for example, I have a section for dementia. So I wrote down everything that I would likely forget if a patient was complaining of being forgetful. So there's some things that come to mind easily, right? You think about Alzheimer's, you think about uh, like a vascular dementia, but then there's other things that I wrote down, you know, obviously like older people, you have to think about depression. So I wrote those down and then the plan is tomorrow morning before, uh, I head out to Houston, which is where my test site is. Um, I'm going to just kind of look over those. So I'm going through that. I'm also, as I'm going through the cases, making uh, a list of any of the cases I want to come back to really quickly. Um, anyone that knows me really well knows that I am more of a fan of looking at the same thing twice versus looking at it at one time and hoping that I retained everything. So I'm going through these cases pretty fast. Um, I'm kind of acting as if I was going to be inside the room with the patients. So I'm going through each of the questions. Um, the way the, the step two CS book um, presents it is that it presents in a table and each little um, row is a question that you likely may ask. So I'm kind of going through it. You know, if the, the person's complaining of abdominal pain, the first question is, where are you here? Abdominal pain, okay, well, how long has it been going on? That's usually the next question. And I can see how many of those questions I ask in my head will also show up in the table. And then I can look at the questions that I asked or I didn't ask that are also on the table. It gives me an idea of what to put down on the sheet. And then tomorrow I'll just have to review the sheet and I won't have to come back to the book, which is like 500 pages. So 10 more cases to go. Um, I'm gonna do them pretty quickly again um, because tomorrow I'm gonna just come back to the cases I think I struggled with a little bit. And that's pretty much it. There's not really much to the studying. Um, at least compared to like a step two CK or a step one for sure. 
but it is something you still want to be prepared for. So i um, going to get back to the case and I'll see you guys in the next clip. So one thing I forgot to mention in the previous clip is that when I'm approaching these cases on um, the first aid book, I'm acting as if I'm going to go in and then I'm creating a diagnosis before I even look at anything else. So I'm going to show you an example, which is this patient comes in, some male, 26 year old, and he comes in complaining of a cough. Um, looking at his vitals, he doesn't really have a fever. All of his vitals are pretty normal. So I'm trying to think of what could cause somebody to have a cough. Easily, he could have like a viral, you know, infection. He could have a bacterial infection. He could have heart failure. Um, he's 26, so probably not likely. Uh, but then you have to think of other things. He could have HIV. Um, he could uh, have GERD. Um, asthma, those are all things that kind of come up to my mind because then when I'm going to go in the room, I'm going to write these things down on the side of my paper uh, and make sure I ask questions relating to that. That way I can make sure I put one of those diagnoses down if anything fits or if something doesn't, but obviously not added on. Um, but hopefully that was helpful. Um, trying to make this as natural as a real thing. So coming up with diagnoses, coming up with questions before you even look at the rest of the case. Um, but yeah, that was my little tidbit and I'll see you guys in the next one. After doing that case, sure enough, this guy has likely HIV, likely reflux, I think, and an infection. The only thing I didn't mention was maybe tuberculosis. So you can kind of start saying how once you get into that mode of thinking of what the diagnosis is, because that's what you eventually want to figure out, um, you would likely be able to get the answers before even reading anything about the patient. So um, try that on your preparation and even just for your normal patient interactions. It'll help you out all the time. All right guys, so it is four o'clock right now. Um, I managed to finish those 15 cases this morning. Uh, went to school, had to grade some tests for a class that I'm taking for. I'm an anatomy tutor. Um, got a workout in, so I have my protein shake here. I'm ready to go. I'm gonna watch some YouTube videos and I'm gonna get those other 15 cases done. But on that note, I want you guys to comment below. Who is your favorite med school YouTuber? Um, comment below, give me some love. I also wanna see who you guys are following, get some ideas myself. Uh, and plus other people in the community get an idea of who else they should be following. So give your favorite YouTuber a comment down below. But I am going to watch those YouTube videos, finish that shake, and then we are gonna get back to those cases for the rest of the day. And I'll catch you guys in a second. All right guys, what is going on? So I don't think the video from yesterday evening got recorded, but I did manage to finish all my cases um, by like yesterday night. There's like 44 of them, so I managed to skim through them. Uh, but currently today is Thursday, so the test is tomorrow. And I am driving to Houston, which is where my testing site is. Uh, I've been driving for three hours. That's how far it is from Dallas. Uh, I've got one more hour to go. So I'm used to making these drives, but I still am tired. Um, and so I'm gonna to get to the hotel, do a little bit of review, and I'll show you guys if I remember uh, kind of what my review consists of. And then tonight, uh, if you guys do watch this, you will see that I will do a live stream on the YouTube channel, which will kind of go over how I prepare for tests since I have one tomorrow. And so, you know, if you didn't watch the live stream, catch the link will be here, here somewhere, you know, uh, you know the drill, or check out the, the links in the description. Uh, but I will kind of go over the last bit of review I do and then tomorrow we'll get test day uh, And then I am ready because that is my last huge thing of medical school aside from you know like applying to residency and all that but um, We'll get to that hurdle once we get there, but uh, just filled up some gas um, Took a walk around the gas station because I was having <sighs> Some tired legs and uh, we're going to make it to Houston within the next 45 minutes and then I will see you guys at the hotel room, so take care. All right guys, what is going on? So I'm officially in the hotel. Uh, as you guys can see, I've already messed up the bed, uh, but managed to get some groceries, and now I was gonna do my review. What I realized is the ultimate fail on my part. I totally forgot all my review papers back at the, <laughs> uh, my apartment in Dallas, so total fail, but that's okay. Um, we are going to uh, improvise. So essentially what I'm just going to do is on the step two CS book that you guys can use, I'll link that down below so you can see what it is. Um, you can, the, there's like these mini cases that they have, um, which cover maybe about 40 to 50 pages of the book. The book is like 500 pages, uh, maybe like 200 pages of real content. But there's 50 pages um, of mini cases, which is like one to two lines of a vignette. So I'll say like a 35 year old uh, female comes in with a headache um, and she's using all oral contraceptives and then you're supposed to kind of come up with maybe four things she can have. Um, so I'm gonna go through uh, all 50 of those pages. Uh, I've already done it. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm gonna go through each page really quickly and I'm gonna ask myself like what the differential would be. And then if I notice myself like kind of uh, not coming up with all the common differentials. So for example, if I'm doing chest pain, you know, 
I may not think of things like GERD, I may not think of things like uh, pneumonia or uh, somebody having trauma. Those are, may not be questions I think of. I'm going to put those on like a sticky note or a Word document. That way I'm going to say, you know, chest pain, make sure to ask about trauma, GERD. And that way tomorrow morning I'm just going to review all those and so I know that when I'm going through my cases tomorrow and seeing the patients, I'll, I'll definitely ask about the heart attacks and whatnot, but I'll also ask about the questions that I likely missed. Um, so that's how I'm going to structure it. It's going to be really quick. So right now it's about to be six. Uh, I'm going to do a live video call um, at seven. So I'm going to try to get this done by 6.30. So 50 pages of really quick skim and just keeping a uh, note of what things I struggle with. And then that's it for my review. Show up tomorrow, uh, kill it, or at least not get killed. But um, I think that's going to be it. I'm going to see you guys likely tomorrow morning unless there's a big updates. Um, today and then uh, we will get ready for the exam tomorrow morning. So I'll see you guys then. All right, guys. Good morning. It is Friday morning, uh, day of the test. Um, I look tired. It's because I am, but not because I didn't get enough. Sleep. I think I got too much. Um, I went to bed at like nine. I woke up at six. So nine hours for me. Uh, I think that's what that comes out to is a lot. So I think I'm at that point where my body is like confused. <laughs> but I'll wake up. No worries. Um, so I have the test in about an hour is when I have to get there. So I'm going to do what I like to call a quick um, review, which is I'm just going to quickly flip through the pages on my review book and just say, yep, got it, got it, got it. It's just more of a um, done for the purpose of confidence versus like actually reviewing. And then I'm going to grab some type of caffeinated beverage, maybe coffee. Now I'll most likely be seeing you guys on the other end of my test. And by then, hopefully I'm a little bit more awake. So I'll see you then. Wish me luck. All right, guys, what is going on? Uh, if you were watching this, that means that I am done with my step two CS. Uh, I am driving back to Austin, which is my hometown. So while I'm kind of finishing up the rest of this drive, sorry about any shakiness, I'm going to kind of tell you how the test went and then give you some ideas on what to prepare for if you're taking this uh, yourself. And then I'll make a different video in the future of kind of how to prepare. But these are like my immediate tips after taking this again. Um, so test overall, I think went well. Uh, it's a tiring day, but it actually goes by pretty fast. It's much faster than your other multiple choice exams, like step two and step one. We're just sitting there and doing a lot of multiple choice questions. Um, so I prefer this over those tests any day, plus it's pass fail. So that's always nice. Um, in addition, you get a lot of breaks, probably much more than you're used to. So you get a break. There's 12 patients that you see. Uh, you see each of them for uh, 15 minutes, and you have 10 minutes to write their notes. About 25, 30 minutes for a whole patient. And you see three patients in a row consecutively, and then you get a break. Uh, you see three more patients, and then you get lunch, and then you see three more patients, you get another break, and then three more patients, and you're done. So day goes, goes by pretty fast because you have these scheduled breaks in between. Um, regarding the actual patient encounters, obviously I'm not gonna tell you any of the actual cases, but they're overall pretty self-explanatory. Some of them are pretty challenging, and so, uh, they kind of tickle your uh, brain a little bit in terms of trying to come up with a diagnosis. Um, but it's really good practice for you to kind of just go from start to finish and seeing if you can ask all the right questions uh, and then come up with diagnoses and differentials and workups. So my tips for anyone that's going to take this test or, uh, you know, is preparing for the exam is work on first, like you have a different flow of plan that you should go through. So the first part of your plan should be uh, make sure you can know how to ask all the right questions. So when you first start your studying plan, make sure you can know what questions to ask in the history, what part, make sure you, need, you remember to ask about like social, surgical, occupation, um, you know, drug use, sexual history, all that stuff. Uh, allergies and then make sure you have all that nailed down then move on to questions uh, or things that you would do for a particular physical exam so know what you would do if somebody came in for a headache what things you would do on a physical exam what questions you would ask uh, you do that for the diagnosis so that's phase two and phase three is come up with the ability to say okay a patient comes in with a dementia uh, complaint or uh, complaint uh, like chest pain what are the four things I'm thinking in my head um, that that patient would have because one thing that I love doing that kind of helped out is when I'm about to go in the room and I see for the first time uh, if you're not familiar with how the test works when you're about to go in the room you look at the door uh, sheet which has info on the patient and why they're coming to see you so I made to say somebody's here for a headache 
um, and you'll see their vitals. So you have to be able to think about four different things, at least maybe four to five that that patient could have. And that way, when you go in the room, you know, four to five diagnoses you may be considering before even seeing the patient. Um, so practice in phase three of coming up with a complaint and what a differential could be before you even uh, go like look into the history. Uh, and then kind of ending off phase three, once you think of you know the, the four to five different differentials, think about what the workups would be to cover those bases. So if I give you a patient, I say, you know, a patient comes in with shortness of breath, start thinking like what's the three to five things I would consider in a patient that has shortness of breath and what would be my workup, assuming I don't know anything about them. Because then you can go in the room confidently, ask all your questions that you've got uh, on phase one and um, do all the physical exams that you got on phase two. And then phase three, you already know what the differentials that you have that you're working with and your note can be much easier to write. So uh, those are kind of my tips on how to do it. Other minor things that I'll include to kind of wrap up this video because I just literally got home. So um, is make sure you're kind of on top of your timing, particularly with timing, uh, typing. People kind of struggle. Uh, if you're not an avid typer, you don't type a lot. Um, 10 minutes can be a lot to, or a little to write everything that you need. So make sure you have your typing down. Um, but that's pretty much what this test It's pass fail guys. So, uh, do your due diligence, make sure you kind of cover your bases in those phases. So get the, the questions you need to ask the diagnosis and phase two, and then the differentials and the workup in phase three, uh, and take a deep breath. When you go, if you feel like you screwed up with one patient, that's fine. There's 11 more for you to uh, be successful at. Um, but that's it for this video and for this like kind of uh, short vlog following my step two CS journey. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this and more vid uh, tip videos on a weekly basis. But I will see you wonderful people um, in the next video. And uh, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments section. But I'm going to stop babbling like I always do at the end of the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, guys.